Welcome to the show. This is a dashboard with OJ. On today's edition, I have a tech entrepreneur with me, and um, we're going to be talking about a whole lot of other things as regards tech, business, and of course, the future of this industry in Nigeria. With me today is Demola Adogun. How are you, sir? Nice to be here. Um, drive. What drives you, first of all? Let's start with what is written on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, basically for me, yeah. what drives me is majorly uh, making an impact. Okay. Impacting people positively the best way I can. Mm. So every innovation, every idea, every client I attend to, every yeah. people I train, every event I facilitate, is just basically to make a positive impact. Basically, one life at, at a time, the mm. best way I can. Okay. So that's what's, um, um, what drives me. Okay. What keeps me awake in the morning? What keeps me awake in the middle of the night? What gives a smile on my face when a client is satisfied okay. at a product delivery or a, someone that attends my training mm. is excited at the delivery of our training? That's what drives me through. Oh, wow. Making an impact. Mm. Interesting. Being um, a tech entrepreneur and um, definitely, um, you say all these things that drive you there nice words, you know, motivational words, which are good. Uh, but someone quote, someone said um, that the opium of the masses for this new generation is notification, numbers, views, likes, and people go crazy over these things. How has that driven you? If you're telling me the truth, I want to know how numbers have driven you to where you've gotten to so far. Well, um, people have said that um, data is a new oil. So I cannot deny the fact that numbers, statistics, likes, views in a social media posts actually goes a long way. Mm -hmm. But um, personally for me, I try as much as possible to not make that drive me um, psychologically because even scientifically, it's not even, it causes depression and a whole lot of other things oh. basically. So, um, Personally speaking, um, beyond the likes, beyond those numbers, it's, um, like I said, the impact I make individually, mm -hmm. the results I get now, based on some of the products I've created, for example, a training academy, the people's lives that I've impacted, I mean, who have left our training and have become entrepreneurs, people that have gotten jobs. Mm -hmm. So to a large extent, I think those numbers actually drives me more than the ones on social, the basically. On social. Exactly. How, how, how you you seem to have you know you have um, you know some kind of control, some kind of um, stuff that you used to control um, your craze or the mad the madness on social media. But not many people have that. Not many people can control their need to um, be affirmed by numbers, by likes, and what have you. What what do you think is wrong? Um, what do you think is the biggest bane of social media? Well, I think personally, when everybody is approaching anything in life, you yeah. should have a preconceived purpose mm -hmm. while you are going to be on social media or anything you basically apply yourself in. Okay. So basically, I see myself more as um, social media being what a tool. Okay. Um, everything in life is a tool. So I, I personally don't see anything as um, negative. You okay. understand? There's not a, a hammer can be used to build a house or can be used to construct a furniture. A hammer can also be used to kill. So social media is basically as a tool. So if people can change their mindset mm. and their orientation about social media, it would help. So because I was an entrepreneur pre-social media, okay. when social media came, I'm also a, um, into digital marketing. When social media came, because of the leverage I saw and the benefits I saw, it's kind of helped me reorientate my mindset to what social media is all about. So are they um, disadvantaged to it? Mm -hmm. Yes. But trust me, there are more advantage. I always tell people that when you're going into social media, people have to know you for something. So you, you are known as something on social media. I'm known as a brand professional, a tech entrepreneur, a creative director. So it's a beautiful marketing tool. Okay. So it, it depends on your purpose and your objective for going there. So just like every normal tool, if you have gone there with the wrong mindset or you've been allured by the aura of social media, mm. just sit back, reorientate your mind and use it for either um, self-branding marketing purpose or mm. entrepreneurial marketing purpose or connectivity, basically. So I think it's just more of what a mindset thing. Social norms can basically affect the way we think and all that, but we should be self-driven. That helps a lot, hence oh. drive, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, Nigel, um... Now, I had Andela come through not so long ago, um, and I asked him, the representative, about what he thinks of the fact that I see 
um, Nigeria or Africa now as a perpetual or remaining in a perpetual state of, of needing help from the Western world, of needing support, of needing aid from the Western world. Now, even in the tech world, you know, back in the days, it was just about, you know, humanitarian needs. But now we find ourselves needing them for virtually everything as regards even tech. What you say about, you know, getting funds and waiting and begging and, you know, going all arms out, you know, to meet these people who are so-called the tech giants of the world? All right. Um, that's a good question. Of course, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we cannot deny the fact that um, a lot of foreign investors, yeah. incubators and accelerators are seeing the investment opportunities in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they are coming to Africa to see how they can invest. Yeah. And, uh, even Asia and very recently Russia, basically. Now, but um, I would like to also bring another perspective to the thought of your question, okay. which is the fact that Nigeria is actually a... Um, we have the numbers in this part of the world, okay. right? And um, as much as the tech um, industry globally are beginning to invest in us, um, which is good and is encouraging, it shows that well, there's something we're doing right. Um, I could also say that we also have some um, um, tech entrepreneurs that are actually standing, starting um, bottom up. Mm -hmm. So personally, I see business as um, top bottom and bottom up in the area of um, capital and investment. So we've actually had some... Um, um, tech entrepreneurs that are following the model of getting investors and um, beyond just getting investors, um, they um, start in a large scale to start with. We also have tech investors who have actually started bottom up that are working with the numbers. Now, um, we have various sectors of the tech industry. We have agrotech, we have a whole lot. I can categorically tell you, because I watched that interview, he mentioned something that was very critical, that in any area of the tech industry, we have a Nigerian startup doing something about it in the agro sector, in various sectors. Now, I can categorically tell you that irrespective of the fact that we have investors investing in us, we also have local startups too that are starting bottom up, meaning building a solution mm. that people need, probably in the agro sector. Mm -hmm. We have edutech too in the educational tech sectors mm -hmm. and are moving from one client to another client and are building their clientele base and eventually even get local investors to even invest in them like banks and some other um, angel investors. Okay. So as much as we have foreign guys coming, I can categorically tell you, being someone that operates in the space, that we also have people that are building their businesses bottom up. Okay, tell me now, truthfully, be, be, be open, vulnerable to me for once, if, right. if you don't mind. How is tech business in this country? Well, okay, how is tech business? Um, from, from SMEs to large scale to... What, what, what is it like to, to be in tech and be in business in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Yeah. All right. Just like every normal business in Nigeria, we, are, we definitely have our challenges. Yeah. Um, we definitely have our, have our challenges. Now, based on the kind of startups, I, the kind of business I do, I work with startups a lot. Okay. Tech startup and tech professionals. Um, fine, we have the big boys in the industry, the big giants, the big tech giants, the fintech and the likes of Andela and other industries. And um, we also have those that are below, you get that um, spectrum. And um, so like every normal industry, they face normal challenge. Every normal industry face light, um, data, that's internet and a whole lot. So it's practically um, not as easy as it might look um, on the outward. But just like every other in industries, there are challenges. Even manufacturing also face challenges. Tech, we also face basically our challenges. But um, what I always tell anybody that wants to come into the industry is that you must be coming with the right solution. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're, when you're coming with the right solution, scaling up is what's always what's easy mm -hmm. for you. So I think the problem most people or most tech startups always face is when they come with a solution that's probably not needed in the market. So that's when they can have a lot of um, um, ups and downs. Now, beyond just coming with the right solution, you should always also be able to be innovative too. Now, the fact that I came into a particular, came to the market with a particular solution, if it's not selling, just move on. So there are challenges, basically, serious challenges. Trust me, it's not as easy as it looks. Why? Because we're in Nigeria. We, we know what we face in this part of the world. But notwithstanding, it's promising. The future looks bright. Mm. And um, I mean, we're now, we're now beginning to have um, foreign investors. So the sky is starting. That, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And um, I see young people, um, students in high school, secondary school, even those in primary school, now they're beginning to learn coding. 
and back in the day coding used to be something for those who done with school those who you know getting jobs and whatever but everybody's learning coding right now and everybody's kind of seen some kind of um opening in the tech business and everybody's trying to get one certificate or the other to make sure that they are you know relevant in in the workspace when it gets to the, the the labor market and what have you how has it been for people like you who've been working with other smes and you know startups and what have you when it comes to teaching the younger ones and raising young um tech entrepreneurs okay um that's a beautiful question and i know that the government how how much of contribution has the government brought into all of this beautiful question now the creative and tech industry which is one of the industry i, I respect and i work the most mm -hmm. is one of the industries whenever i have opportunity to say um has has, has actually grown uh, at, at, the, at the early stage of the industry without uh, much input from the government mm -hmm. now later on the government now starts saying the promising i'm sorry, sorry how promising the industry are but sorry is and um, they started investing in it basically now when it comes to young people um i mentor a, a couple of young people we also run one or two coding academy and um one of the things i always encourage parents out there especially parents that they are seeing the possibility of coding is to get your children involved early now we all know that whatever you learn early stays with you what longer mm. and um, um i would say that nigeria we are coming in a bit late Okay. We're coming in super late. But it's barely than never. Exactly. We're coming in super late. Why? Because other parts of the world, like Singapore, China, in their curriculum as early as their secondary school, coding is already a curriculum in the system. It's Right now, it's more of an after school, you get um, activities. Mm -hmm. So um, beyond we getting children uh, to be coding at a very young age, we need to include it in our curriculum. Now, some schools are already doing that, which is very commendable, but it's very important. Now, one thing I tell people is that um, I follow some young people abroad at the age of 12, they're already building mobile apps for um, 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 Apple Play Store and even Google Play Store. That is to say, and from personal experience, I have a 12 years old I'm mentoring that attends coding classes, even whenever I have coding classes, even with mature people my age, okay. and they can assimilate and understand everything that is going on and is doing pretty well in it. Mm. So I encourage parents to get their children um, started um, at a young age. Um, young people can assimilate code, coding very fast wow. and very easy. And super fast, and even like more innovative. Just like ride a bicycle. Exactly. The younger like, you are, exactly, the exactly. Oh. So um, um, it's commendable. And um, with my experience, like you asked, in various startups environments, and working with young people, I've not had any issues with them. And I always encourage parents to do that. So if you how have affordable is this for for the, for the parents? For the parents, yeah, yeah. So now in the up in the market, we now have um, a whole a whole lot of options okay. right now in the market. Um, um, not to mention names, I can categorically tell you that we have a lot of summer camp programs. Yeah. We have a lot of training academies that are going on and are relatively very affordable for children to actually um, um, cope with. Now we have the high scale on. Okay. Now we now have also what the cheaper. Um, um, coding classes that are now available in the market. Wow. So it's relatively cheap, it's relatively cheap. Now, it used to be a bit expensive, but now it's now a bit cheaper now because we now have more competitions in the market in that space. Yeah, supply and demand issues. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. the Drive Conference is some few days away. Yeah. What exactly is this Drive Conference about? And a year of um, the 2020 innovate thing, create thing, and um, so many questions, but I'm going somewhere with this. Um, you know, back in the day, especially when we got to, when people start saying that, are you 2000 compliant? You know, right now, 2020 is everywhere. 2020 was the vision of some people from 20 years ago, and 2020 is just right at the corner. What is this 2020 theme, or theme now, I should say? What is this conference about? Because it's, it, it seems so huge that I'm all expecting to know much more. And the people out there definitely want to know more about this um, tech conference that you're about to start up. Yeah. All right. So the Drive Conference is actually a creative and tech conference. Mm -hmm. And basically the vision is to drive relevant conversation in the creative and tech ecosystem. Okay. Now, the reason why this is very important and expedient at this crucial stage, especially in Nigeria, is that there is beginning to become a thin line between the creative and tech ecosystem. Creative people are beginning to get involved in tech yeah. and tech people are beginning to get involved in creative. Mm. Uh, you are technically in the creative industry. And, you I'm, get to and I'm definitely running 
a tech, uh, an app. Exactly. I'm on social media. Exactly, on social media. You I'm understand? I'm on my show. You're, you understand what I'm saying right now? <laughs> and I think you told me that you do one or two basic designs yourself yeah. on your own. So uh, there's they, they, they beginning to become a thin line between both, both sectors. Now, the sooner we start driving conversations in these industries, the sooner there's collaboration. You know, mm. once there's collaboration and there's um, conversations mm. and innovations, is the next thing that comes into play. So the the, the, the vacuum we're feeling that, that 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 is available right now is driving the conversations in both industries, bringing both industries together, major players in both industries, um, leading professionals in both industries okay. to begin to drive conversations. What further us in the next what system? Now talking about 2020, the world is in a very what sensitive stage right now. Now, okay. um, um, what would happen if um, OJ in in the next 10 years should call OJ now? What are you going to be telling the OGO now based on the innovation that is happening there? 2020 is kind of like a shadow of things to come. It's like a transition year between the now and the would be. And the future. And the future. Wow. We're beginning to talk about um, nanotechnology. We're yeah. beginning to talk about artificial intelligence. We're beginning to talk about robotics. Yeah. We're beginning to take, take, take man to the, to the mass. What was in science fiction oriented based um, 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 Narrative. um, um, narratives is now what's coming through. Also in the Nigeria space, there are a lot of things that are going on that we're not talking about. You know, I told you that in the tech ecosystem and creative ecosystems, um, people are doing things. Let me speak like a Nigerian. Boys are running shows. Are you getting me? <laughs> Hustle. Hustle, exactly. <laughs> that nobody's talking about. I can talk to you that do you... Do, okay, let me just give you a, a little bit of example. In the entertainment industry. Yeah. Oh, now, okay, we know Nollywood is doing very well. I don't need to talk about movies that hitting the block box stores and hitting Netflix. Yeah. Let me, um, also, music industry, I began to have, which is part of the creative industry. I began to have music players that have... Um, doing globally in the international scene, Border Boy, Whiskey, and the likes. But I can let's even bring it down a little bit lower to the animated industry. Mm. Recently, Pixar released um, Toy Story 4. Do you realize that we have people in Nigeria right now that can create animated stories or are already doing that in our ecosystems that nobody's hearing about? These are the conversions we need to drive. We have Yoik Studios and um, 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 Antil Studio that re recently released Malaikai, which is like a an adaptation of what Queen Amina, mm. I get to I'm trying to, mm. of the North. Mm. And they just released a future film less than three um, um, some, some, some months ago, and they're doing very well, and it's as top quality, top notch as Toy Story. World standard? Uh, world standard. I do a lot of Nickelodeon. I love Nickelodeon a lot. Yeah. But it's high you, time you have, we start you telling... Have kids. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have kids. It's high time we start telling the Nigerian story in our own narrative. Do you realize that also, um, we also have, um, I think, Commotion Studio that is releasing a, an animated adaptation of Shango. They've been in the works of it, at least based on my following, for over um, um, since the beginning of the year and even before then. Now, it's high time we start telling our story in world class, world standard. It's high time your kids, my kids, mm. not, not, would not just be watching PJ Max, but start watching, are you getting what I'm saying right now? Nigerian adaptation of our own world story. I mean, be able to watch children um, going to Oshodi, do you understand what I'm saying right now? And doing adventures, fighting yeah. villains, doing crazy things. Um, spoof animation, one of the speakers that were inviting okay. to um, our conference, Mr. Um, Ayodele Elegbede, he is one of the people that runs um, Lagos Comic Con. They just released Hero Cops, a superhero animated adaptation, I mean, sorry, animated what, um, um, short film okay. that talks about what Nigeria, black people, Osho D. You understand what I'm saying? Right now we need to start having, I mean, the, the likes of Batman, Spider-Man in the Nigerian version. Mm. Do you get? So it's high time we begin to start having all these stories. Things like this are already going on already in our industries. People are already getting things done already. Animated studios are already um, coming up. Design studios are already coming up. A lot of things are already going on, but um, conversations are not going out there. Words are not being told yet. Even in the tech ecosystem too, we are beginning to have crazy softwares, crazy softwares, crazy applications that, that can match global standard. But until we start telling our own stories, driving those conversations the proper way and the right way, we won't be able to move to the next level. Hence, one of the reasons why we're having my conference. <laughs> I like your exuberance. Yeah, I think I'm a bit passionate. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a crazy drive that we need, especially in, in this stratosphere where um, you have to push yourself, you have to do it all by yourself. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's it's applaudable what, what this is all about. So, but before we end this, this conversation, um, we need to know what time it's holding, where it's holding. Um, of course, um, if you can tell me more, I don't mind so that um, the, the, the viewer out there can, you know, make it a call 
to be at your event. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, like I said, right, we're inviting um, um, leaders in the global um, ecosystem. We mentioned Andela. We're getting some speakers that are coming from Andela to speak to the tech guys. Okay. We're also bringing some other speakers coming from other various um, sectors, I mean, programmers, both locally and internationally. I'm bringing a, a programmer from Sri Lanka that is going to come and speak um, basically on artificial intelligence, okay. deep learning, and all that to get Nigerian ecosystem, tech ecosystem acclimatized with such um, global standard in okay. that area. And um, also, also bringing um, in the, so so for the creative, we have, you know, the creative industry is a lot. We have advertising, we have, um, um, t um, we have um, uh, applied art and a whole lot of areas, but we're focusing more on the digital area of um, the creative um, ecosystem. So we're bringing um, the provost of O2 Academy is coming to come and speak. We're oh. bringing um, which one of the top, one of the top Top advertising um, um, agency school that we have. They are doing some great stuff over there. We're also bringing, um, like I told you earlier on, Alec Bedetu that is also coming. Then I'm also bringing um, Emma Idosio. She 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 she's releasing some movies and she's doing. She's a cinematographer. She's doing some great stuff globally. Mm. Uh, I respect her so much. She's come to my speak to cinematographers. We're also bringing, um, 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 I call him Lexin. That's his nickname. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Akinyele um, Lekon. He's okay. also um, a veteran. Um, 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 creative director and he runs his own um, 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 advertising and design agency. He's also come to and speak. And we're also bringing numerous panelists. So you get to see um, global leaders. And um, beyond all that, we are trying to like bridge a gap when it comes to mentorship. Now, a lot of young people in the industry, they don't know how to um, get mentored by these people. So we are going to inspire we're going to educate, we're bringing very thought provocating topics, and it's also going to be an avenue for young people or enthusiasts to be able to be mentored by these people. A lot of people come to me that want to be a programmer, they don't know where to start. They want to learn Java, Node.js, JavaScript. Come on, you can't learn everything. You need to know what the career paths are. So when you get, have access to a mentor, it will guide you. So where is it taking place? Um, Maleficent Cinema. Okay. Um, on Ikorodu Road, um, on Ikpan bus stops to be specific. Okay. And um, time is 10 a.m., November 30th. Um, to register, you go to drivehub.ng. Okay. To register, you go to drivehub.ng, November 30th. Um, can, I, can I watch this online? Oh, yes. Okay. And it's also going to be streamed online. Okay. Now, you remember I've been emphasized that it's an international conference. Yeah. So we've created a lot of um, channels in the global space for people to help us advertise over there. So um, for our international community from New York, from, we have speakers that are going to be speaking from New York. We have okay. someone coming from, that will be speaking from New York too. So we're also touching the global space. So it's going to be streamed live online. So people can watch. So if you are in UK, US, China, Australia, um, log in, mm. um, 10 a.m. Um, Nigerian time. Um, <laughs> I think that should be GMT plus one yeah. time and um, be a part of the show. You can also follow us on social media on Drive Hub NG on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Drive Hub NG. Website to register again is drivehub.ng. Before you go, what, what do you think the government should be doing? for its people as regards tech? All right, that's a brilliant, beautiful question. And um, I'm just going to just, in a short time, emphasize the importance why the government needs to invest in tech. Mm. Um, the proposed um, revenue for the 2020 budget, um, revenue that will be generated you get, um, in Nigeria for the 2020 budget is 8.15 trillion Naira. That's approximately 23 or 24 billion dollars, if my mathematics are right. Um, when you look at the big fours in the US and UK, the annual revenue mm -hmm. for Facebook under ads for the second quarter of 2019 is 16.6 .6 billion dollars. Okay. Now, for Google, it's approximately 38 point, I think, 2 billion dollars. So meaning the revenue for Google for second quarter is higher than Nigerian proposed revenue budget for 2020. So you can see why I said that what, there is a vacuum, hmm. an isolation that is not being invested by the government. Now, remember we said earlier on that the foreign market and investors, angel investors, incubators, hubs are beginning to come and invest in Nigeria. There is something they are saying. Now, the federal government of Nigeria are doing great. They start investing in the tech ecosystem. But I tell you that what if they can invest more, mm. if they can see the gold in this. The creative industry is operating in the informal market. 
a lot. A lot of money and transactions go, go in that space. If they can invest more, if they can create hubs, if they can create their own ecosystems, if, if, if they can create their own villages, are you getting what I'm saying? If, if they can create their own innovative centers that would make things, ease of business easier for us, trust me, they will be solving majority of an un unemployment problem in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And not just that, they will also be improving Nigeria's GDP. Thank you so much for coming. You're, You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> nice to have you. Yeah, it's great to have you. Wow. And that is on the edition of um, Dashboard with OJ. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and of course, wish us well. See you guys next time. Ciao.